Aloha and welcome back to my channel, Astrology Dome. Today I'm going to talk to you about your chart ruler. This is something that is really important for you to know because your chart ruler will give you a lot of clues about who you are, how you go about in the world, how you meet the world in a first reaction, first instinct level, and how people perceive you, what kind of vibe do you send out there, and what people see right away about you that can be a great mirror for you to reflect on how you show up in the world. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that uh, term of chart ruler. What it means is that when you were born, there was a constellation rising in the east. And that constellation at the moment of your birth with the specific longitude and latitude of your birth created your ascendant. The ascendant is that sign that is on your first house cusp. But that sign has a ruler. It's its natural ruler. And it's not necessarily your sun sign or your moon sign or any of your planet signs. It's its own important component of your chart. And since the ascendant defines how we show up in the world, it is really important to investigate that ascendant of yours and see what kind of qualities, gifts, and what kind of challenges it is posing for you. So I'd like to share my screen and show you uh, a presentation that I made. And I will also share some chart so we can really see it because I believe in visual learning. I love visual learning. I don't know what about you. Here we go. Let's share my screen. Okay, so your chart ruler. This slide is talking about the importance of your ascendant. Again, the ascendant is the cusp of your first house. When you have a chart, there is a cusp of your first house and there is a sign on that cusp, whatever it is for you. That sign reveals the area of life in which the principles of the sign will be learned. What does it mean? So you're coming with a sun sign, a moon sign, and the rest of your planets are in different signs. But the ascendant sign means that you will have to embody that sign's qualities and challenges and live through them. That will be your filter, actually. Everything else, all your chart will be focused into your ascendant because the ascendant is how you are in your body. It represents the physical body. It represents the first response that you have to things. It represents how you meet the world, how you are with new situations, how you want to be acknowledged, how people acknowledge you. Sometimes people would think that you are your ascendant sign rather than your sun sign. Why do people get confused? Because we are presenting to the world our ascendant sign. So it's the first impression we make. And it's actually our first defense mechanism and first reaction to new stimuli, how we instinctively react to new situation. It's uh, the first impression we make on a personal level. It's how we look, you know, sometimes people look, their ascendant, most of the time people look how they ascend, their ascendant is rather than their sun sign or anything else. So if you have an, an Aquarius ascendant, you like to be unusual. You probably wear unusual clothes. If you have Libra ascendant, you always care for being more beautiful, more put together. So it all depends what our ascendant is. Now, what is your chart ruler? Your chart ruler is the planet that rules the sign on the cusp of your first house. It's that simple. So if you have Aries on your first house, your chart ruler is Mars. If you have Taurus on your first house, on the ascendant, Venus is your chart ruler. If you have Gemini, Mercury is your chart ruler. If you have Cancer, Moon is your chart ruler. If you have Leo on your ascendant, Sun is your chart ruler. If you have Virgo, Mercury. If you have Libra, Venus, if you have Scorpio, Pluto, if you have Sagittarius, it's Jupiter, if you have Capricorn, it's Saturn, if you have Aquarius, it's Uranus, and if you have Pisces, it is Neptune. So this planet, whichever ascendant you own, the planet, the chart ruler, the planet that rules the sign on your ascendant is very significant for you. So that planet will be kind of a messenger. That planet can be anywhere in your chart. 
It is not necessarily near your ascendant or near your sun or anywhere. It can be placed anywhere in your chart. So that planet that rules your ascendant, that rules your chart, is a messenger. It is going to be placed somewhere in your chart and it will help you leave your ascendant with some more meaning. And right away, we'll delve into that. Here is a chart that I made for today's transits, but if someone would be born right now, that would be their birth chart, correct? And look at that. The ascendant here is at 19 degrees Aquarius. And Aquarius ascendant is ruled by Uranus. So we're looking for that person, for that baby. We're looking for their chart ruler. And, and Uranus is right here at 15 degrees Taurus. So what can we say about that ascendant, that person? First of all, a person that comes with an Aquarius ascendant is an unusual person, is someone who cares for their individuality, for freedom, for equality. They have their own mind. They're very futuristic oriented, very inventive, very um, unconventional, I would say. But we can get more information about that person just by looking at their chart ruler. We're not even looking at their planets, not at the sun, not anywhere. Just looking at the ruler of their ascendant, Uranus, here in the third house in Taurus. So what is the third house? And why is Uranus, the ruler of the ascendant, sitting there? What does it mean? First of all, the third house is the house of communication. And now we know that Aquarius is a communication oriented sign because it is an air sign so it's a mental sign it loves to have communication and dynamic conversation the third house just make it double because the third house is the house of communication in our chart it's where we do the chit chat with everybody it's where we communicate with our surrounding it's where we are learning as kids what it means to talk, to communicate, to move about. It's a kind of a restless house and Uranus on its own and Aquarius on their own are restless. So it is giving us this opportunity to see that this person may be even more restless. It's not enough that they have Aquarius on their ascendant. They're more restless because the ruler of their chart, which is Uranus, which is restless on its own, is in the third house that the backdrop story of the third house is Gemini. So if their Uranus is having that backdrop uh, influence of Gemini being the ruler of the first house, we know that that person would love to talk, would love to communicate, would need constant stimuli. It's Uranus needs to constantly change, would embrace change greatly because it's in the third house. This person will really be uh, dealing with maybe uh, siblings, third house rulership, uh, their community, maybe they will become something important, someone important in their community, third house, because that's the surrounding, immediate sur surrounding. Maybe they will be um, that knowledge seeker for the rest of their life, third house, learning. Maybe they'll be teaching, third house could be teaching as well. And we have the South Node here to uh, kind of help us with that clue. But in any event, what it means is that person would have a greater influence of third house qualities on how they show up in the world because they show up through their relationship. So the third house will give it another level of meaning. Now, this Uranus is in Taurus. So what does Taurus do? How does Uranus behave in Taurus? First of all, Uranus is in its fall in Taurus. It doesn't like Taurus that much because Uranus wants to break free and create change. But Taurus is that stable, strong influence of stability. So that means it's actually giving stability to the ascendant. So if that person could have been so agitated, so... Uh, needing chain, constant change, Uranus will give it a stability momentum, will actually give it a box and the ability to seek stability. So that means that this person will seek change. However, it will seek change in a more stable, secured way. Their inclination to seek change would be to increase security. 
Now, another thing that is very, very important when we delineate and understand the chart ruler is to see what sign it is occupying, what house is it in, and what kind of aspect is it doing to other planets in our chart? Because that will give us a lot of clues on how we immediately react to life. So when we look at this Uranus, what comes to mind? Right away, we can see that Uranus is together with the North Node for that person. Now, the North Node is where we're going to. This is our future. This is what we came here to learn. This is where our next evolutionary stage and level are. So this person is pulling strongly towards their North Node. They want to really affect change this life. They want to become more secure, more stable, more natural, more sustainable in this life. However, they're doing it in a very unique and individualistic way because that is their Uranus saying, uh, I'm going to show you how to become your individual self and how to be in very authentic to who you are in a very natural way. So the fact that their Uranus is together with the North Nose give us a strong inclination that this person will really strive to create immense change in their lifetime, in this particular lifetime, because this is their evolutionary impulse and push for this lifetime. This is their intent. This is their focus. So every knowledge, every ability to gain more knowledge and to evolve and to create effective change and grow in their life would be welcomed by this person. This is going to be a very curious person that wants to learn higher consciousness or higher understanding for their path. So anything that will direct them to that uh, target, to that goal, would be very welcome by them. So it's very important to note what are the aspects to the ruler of your chart. So let's see what other aspect does this Uranus has. We can see that Uranus is actually in a square to their sun and in a square to their ascendant. So a square is always a challenging aspect. It is asking you to exert some sort of effort in order to proceed. So we already know that this person would always need to create some sort of effort, to create some sort of movement, to be dynamic. A square is a dynamic aspect. It is requiring you to take action. And so this person will be required to take action. And sometimes it will be an abrupt action because Uranus can bring unexpected changes. So we know that this person will have some sort of unexpected uh, occurrences in their life that will create huge awarenesses for them in relationship to what they perceive themselves to be, how they perceive themselves in the world and what would create security for them. And it's squaring their sun, which is the purpose of their incarnation in this life and their ascendant, how they show up in the world. This is a very strong aspect for them. And this is one of the main aspects that will constantly show in their life. You know, we have some aspects that are less important in our chart, and we have some aspects that are very important. They will keep reoccurring in our life until we master them. And this is one of the most important aspects this person has in their chart because it is squaring the ascendant, which is a very important point in your chart, and your sun which is a very important point in your chart. The sun is the purpose, the ascendant is your filter. How everything filters through that lens, through that vision that you have through your ascendant. The ascendant define how you perceive the world and how the world perceive you. So this person with that square between their chart ruler to their sun and ascendant will always be challenged by some unexpected occurrences that would lead them to make changes that will create more security for them. I hope that makes sense because it really is important. Let me progress that chart forward so we can have an, uh, a different chart to look at. It could be imaginary, it doesn't really matter. Let's move it by month. So I moved the chart to some imaginary date uh, that someone, someone will be born with that chart at that date. It's just for the purpose of uh, showing you what 
chart rulers combination we can have. And you have your own. So please check the sign on your ascendant. Find out what that sign's ruler is and look for that sign's ruler in your chart. So that person has Gemini on their ascendant. What is the chart ruler? It is Mercury. Where is Mercury in this chart? Mercury is in Taurus right here in the 11th house. Gemini rising people are really dynamic people. They're very curious. They're very intellectual. They want to know a lot of stuff. They're very curious. They want to learn. They're very uh, agile. They're mutable. They can gather a lot of information and they like to do many things at once because they have the capacity. They have some huge brain capacity. The chart ruler Mercury is in Taurus. Right away, we know that that person would like to slow down a little bit. Taurus, slow down, take it more easy, think deliberately. It is not, if that chart ruler would have been in Aquarius or would have been in Libra, would be more agitating or in Pisces would be flowing. But in Taurus, it is thinking business. Maybe this person wants to do some business. Maybe they care about how to amass uh, um, resources because that is Taurus function. It's also in the 11th house. So the 11th house would have to be where the chart ruler lives and create and function in this lifetime. So the 11th house is all about group and organization. So maybe that person is an important person in some sort of an organization or a group. Maybe they are looking for their tribe in this life. Maybe they are, they can be a CFO of a nonprofit organization. Isn't that beautiful? Caring about the earth, maybe because it's in Taurus. So this is something that will greatly talk to that person's purpose in this life. It has nothing to do with where their son is. It is just a supporting way of fulfilling their purpose in this life. Does that make sense to you? So that person also comes with Mercury and Taurus conjunct their North Node. Again, we have a person that is kind of giving extra emphasis to their chart ruler, to their ascendant in this lifetime, making sure that it, this person is moving towards their future. They're not dwelling on the past. They're not reliving a lesson. They're actually creating a whole new path for themselves because this chart ruler is conjunct their north node. Also, let's see what other aspect this chart ruler is, is having. So the, their chart ruler is also very significantly sextiling their Saturn, same degree, six degree Pisces towards six degree Taurus. And that is an opportunity. What kind of opportunity? We know that Saturn in the 10th house would be someone very prominent in their career life known as a wise person, someone who achieved a status in their career life. So we know that this Mercury, maybe I was right, that person will be uh, some sort of a key component in an organization that maybe would care for the earth or to do with money somehow, and they will become prominent in that organization. That is an opportunity presented right here. Also, it is sextiling their Venus in the first house in Cancer, a caring person. So there is an opportunity for them to develop an ability to care for others in the way they show up in the world. How interesting a chart explanation can be. How many more layers and levels you can get by just looking at your chart ruler. So this is really important. What I'd like to do next, and I hope I made it clear by showing you how to look for your chart ruler. So first you have to see what the sign on your ascendant is, and then what is its natural ruler and where that natural ruler is in your chart and what kind of aspects it is doing in your chart. Okay, so I hope this is understood. I would like to stop sharing this and go back to my presentation and give you all the explanations of where your chart ruler is in the house and what does it mean. So here it is. If your chart ruler is in your first house, the way you come across is very important for you. You are also very self-conscious about your body 
And you have some airy traits, right? Because it's in your first house. So we can always remember what is the natural ruler of the first house or any house that the chart ruler is and give it a sub layer to our understanding and delineation of that position. So you can be reactive. You can be very much of a leader because you take care of yourself. You know how to do self. And so you show up in the world as that strong leader self. You can be impulsive. You can be self-centered. Uh, you are self-motivated because your chart ruler occupies your first house. This is you and you alone that will propel you forward. Uh, you live life. Uh, believing that fate is in your hands, so true, and you're likely to be proactive because your chart ruler, no matter what sign it will be in, will still have that dynamic cardinal trait because it's in a cardinal house, which is an action-oriented house. So you see how many layers, how many keywords we can attribute to our chart ruler to give it a really full body explanation. If your chart ruler is in the second house, you have a very strong value system. You are that person that cares for your integrity. You value security more than others. You can be fixed and stubborn because don't forget the second house, the natural ruler of the second house is Taurus. So you would have some Taurus uh, signature to your chart ruler. Even if it's a wild chart ruler like Mars or uh, Uranus, it will still be more stable just by being placed in the second house. You would like routines, uh, you would be focused on established material security for yourself. You would like roots, you would be security oriented person. And so this is important to note, even if you have a very unstable chart ruler, right? It will give you the stability, just another layer. If your chart ruler is in the third house, you would be curious, you would have communication skills, you would need movement and changes constantly, you would be active, but around your, your surrounding, because the third house naturally is ruled by Gemini, and it is represented by being in our community, in our immediate surrounding, that's the third house, relationship to siblings, and definitely strong need to communicate with people. If your chart ruler is in the fourth house, you are looking for security, you're looking for home, you're looking to build a nest, you're looking for roots. Uh, your home is your sanctuary, is your refuge. You need a family structure. Even if your chart ruler may be something that is less stable, you still need to give it kind of a, a box, to give it a, a frame of reference to feel secure within yourself. In this lifetime, you're working on security issues that are related to how you show up in the world, that are related to your body image, that are related to how you are in relationship with the world around you. If your chart ruler is in the fifth house, you love children, you love to be creative, you love to express yourself. This is something that is really important for you. You love attention. You love to be romantic. You love to be proud. You love to be involved in creative pursuit. Maybe you're a creator. Maybe you're a writer, a filmmaker. Maybe you are um, a, an artist. Maybe you're a musician. Whoever you are, this chart ruler will give you the position, the house position, will give you that creativity. From there, you have to decide and give meaning to the chart ruler themselves, what planet is it, what that planet represents, and what sign it is in. This will give you all the layers you need to decipher and understand your chart ruler in a deeper level and how you are showing up in the world. So if your chart ruler is in the sixth house, work is extremely important. You could be a workaholic sometimes because you get meaning from being at work. You get meaning from having a certain routine, your body aware, so physical activity, healthy program of diet and exercise is very much needed because don't forget the ascendant represents our physical body and the sixth house is healthy routine. So that means you're very concerned with healthy routines and they're very good for you. You could be modest, the sixth house is ruled by Virgo naturally, which is a modest sign, and you're definitely helpful and willing to help others because the sixth house is all about service to others. 
If your chart ruler is in the seventh house, one-to-one relationships are extremely important for you because you can really only see yourself by others mirroring to you. So, you know, you come to this life and you need others and you need relationship in order to know thyself, in order to understand who you are, how you act, what you say, and how are all those actions that you take affecting others. And by those mirrors that you get as a reflection from others, you understand who self is. And you came here for a self-exploration journey. We all did, but someone with a chart ruler in the seventh house is really someone that needs that other person's perspective to know themselves. So you like that bouncing off others, the feedback you get from others to know yourself deeper. You can be indecisive sometimes because Libra is the natural ruler of the seventh house and Libra can see both sides, but become indecisive at times. So if that's who you are, just pay attention to that. If your chart ruler is in the eighth house, you are a born psychologist. You are delving into deeper truth. You know that there are many more levels into any situation, into anybody, into any communication, and you want to dig deep and find out the root cause of any situation. You can be mysterious. You can be very private. Eight house people are private people. And since your chart ruler is showing up in the eighth house, you may be very private, not really wanting to tell people about yourself or share uh, with your intimate details about self. It takes a very special person and kind of a soul merging in order for you to open up. Probably psychology appeals to you because you are seeking for the meaning of life. And you may be a very focused personality and hardworking personality and putting time into research and investigations. If your chart ruler is in the ninth house, you're an outgoing person. You like adventure. You like to talk about philosophy. You like to see many points of view. You like knowledge. You like to acquire knowledge. You are self-propelling, growth-oriented person. You like learning all the time. You have some strong opinions about life, strong philosophy of life. You may need to change that or shift that or open up to other people's opinions. So you're going to meet a lot of different people from different cultures and different walks of life just to understand that there are other opinions, other philosophies of life that are just as important and valid as yours. And you will be attracted to travel for sure. So I'll give you some adventure and you are probably there. Obviously, it will depend on the sign that your chart ruler is in and obviously the sign on your ninth house and what kind of aspect your chart ruler is making to other planets. If your chart ruler is in the 10th house, you are career oriented. You would like to be known for someone who achieved some sort of a status, some sort of capabilities in life, you like to be a reputable person and you like to take responsibility for that. You like to show up as a strong person, as someone who is the CEO of your life and probably the CEO of something else as well. That is a strong, viable possibility for you when your chart ruler is in the 10th house, commanding, uh, becoming the boss, becoming that person that is wise and known for what they're doing in their career. You like to achieve that status. You like to be on the top of the hierarchy. This is something that is driving you. Recognition is driving you. And obviously you'll put in the work to get there. If your chart ruler is in your 11th house, you like people. You like to find your tribe and belong, belong to a greater community, to be a part of a greater group of like-minded people, of people that are the same wavelength as you are. You're concerned about the welfare of others. You're concerned about equality. The 11th house is naturally ruled by Aquarius. So you would have those Aquarius vibes, no matter what your chart ruler is and what sign you have on your 11th house. It is still having some Aquarius vibes in the background 
So that means you will be more outgoing, sociable, adventurous. You would care for friends. Friends will be a big part of your life. And being a part of a, of a group will give you a lot of meaning to your life and satisfaction. And maybe you will be involved in such organizations and you will play a big part in an organization. Always look for the sign and aspect of your chart ruler in the 11th house, in any house. And the last but not least is that your chart ruler is in your 12th house. Now, the 12th house is that place of intuition. It's that part of us that we can't really see well because it's our subconscious. So you are more psychic. You're getting all this information, all this material that is uh, subconscious material. Therefore, it is not really... In words, it is just knowings and understanding and meaning of something that is greater than you, of the universe, of God, of something mysterious, of the matrix, of that amazing web of energy that we live in and we call the universe. You get that. You are swimming in that place and you understand that there are greater forces at play that are hidden but are very strongly present in our life. You get that. Even if you don't have words for it, even if you don't understand what it means, you get that. Now, it may lead to two different situations. One, you would feel some sort of anxiety because this is something that doesn't come to words. It's very hard to translate these mysteries of life into words. So this may give you an uncontrolled feeling that you're not in control and this would be very anxiety provoking that some of your life is not under your control. The other part is that you may feel that you're alone because the 12th house is kind of lonely. We can't really talk to people from our 12th house. It's that realm of meditation, of uh, going within and being connected to all that vastness. On the other hand, it can give you the gift of creativity, of deep sensitivity, of compassion, of being very, very perceptive. So you could work and help others channel their issues into meaning. And you can be a very strong conduit for others to understand themselves in a greater way. I see a lot of psychologists and a lot of people that work with people, coaches and doctors that work with people and help them in a great way to go into the, the next level of themselves. So this is so interesting, isn't it? To realize that our chart ruler gives us such deep meaning to our chart, even without knowing where the sun is, or the moon is, you will get so much information from knowing what your chart ruler is and understanding it to its deeper levels. Everything in astrology has many, many levels. And it's great to combine all those keywords together and get a whole meaning of a symbol. So your chart ruler would be as important, I would say, as your ascendant, as your sun, as your moon. Those are the three main components of our chart that are driving this life, that are making you who you are and causing you to seek whatever it is that you seek. And the chart ruler can give you explanation to how you can do that, how you can reach uh, what you seek, how you can live up to your purpose in this life. Where do you take your journey into and what you can, what meaning you can drive from that journey that will enhance and take you to your next level because we keep evolving in a spiral. And as we go, we get more and more meaning and understanding in a greater sense until we become wise, hopefully, right? So that's it. If you like my video, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. That's the way I can grow my channel. Thank you, everybody, that you have subscribed. And as always, take care of yourself and become the best version of yourself today and every day. I will see you next time.